Hey guys, what's up? So, bought this a few months ago, and it's a backflush kit for my uh, Power Stroke 6 liter here in my truck. And I think it's like 85 bucks on eBay. Actually, normally these things are like about 125, but I'll try to put a link, the eBay link, the original one I bought it at. And uh, came with this little cool anodized aluminum thing to, uh, I'll show you that when we get to the backflush. And, uh, cool, got this going. So, yeah, my deltas are actually going up to about 16 on the highway. So, I'm definitely creeping up around, like, 15 to uh, around 16, somewhere in there. And I've had this truck for, like, five years, and it's been creeping up about a, a degree every year, the deltas. So, I'm going to try to backflush this thing. And I also made a, uh, an adapter here. So, this is a sandblaster. Sorry, I cut my hand. <laughs> but, um... This is a sandblaster right here, like an abrasive blaster, like I got at Home Depot. I don't think they still sell it there, but back in the day they did. And I just attached a couple garden hose adapters and some uh, radiator hose or coolant hose. You know, so I'm going to hook up the water here, and this will go into this adapter here. And that like that. And that way I can actually put some air on it too, you know, put it under pressure. So I'm going to do both. I'm just going to do the hose power from it. So I'm going to start off with the hose and try to open it up before I start putting air in it. And I also got some uh, CLR. So I'm going to do a couple of soaps in CLR. And we'll get it going. So first got to take off the CAC tube so I can get access to that thing. And I'll show you the reason why it's why I'm doing this. Also, uh, besides the fact that it's kind of creeping up there, I also got a boy dog tuner, uh, and I'll, I'll show you that with a pyrometer kit on the next video. And uh, so I, I want to make sure this is actually cleaned out. I do actually have my AGR. I'm in California, so I do need to smog this thing. So um, yeah, I wanted to make sure I'm not creeping up. You know what I mean? Because uh, I'll go into detail like why you should do this. <laughs> yeah, because it's behind your oil cooler is the EGR cooler. So if your if your oil cooler is restricted, then your uh, EGR coolers are restricted, and that's when it cracks. So I'm going to be putting extra tune on this thing. So I'm going to be generating more EGTs, which then could crack the uh, EGR uh, cooler. So, all right. All right. So I hope you can see that I have a light here. So under this thing right here, that is the the outlet for the uh, oil cooler, and it comes up through here, goes through the oil cooler, and that blue Thing right there is the actual EGR cooler hose. It feeds back to the EGR cooler, cools off the EGR cooler, and then goes back into the cooling system again. But uh, like I was saying, is you know this is actually a restriction. So if your oil cooler is blocked or gets starting to get restricted, it's going to restrict the the coolant flow back to your EGR cooler. And then uh, when you add more tune to it, you're going to be generating more EGTs or gas, gas temperature. Which then could flash boil this thing. And then if you don't have any coolant in your EGR cooler, it's going to crack. And then that actually what causes head gasket failure is by adding more. Actually, uh, when you start adding coolant or, or water to your uh, combustion chamber, it's, it's going to create insane pressures, which will then blow a head gasket. So the main cause of blowing head gaskets in these trucks is the EGR cooler failure and too much boost or timing, just too much cylinder pressure. So. But you're basically almost hydro-locking your, your system, and that basically just blows head the gasket. So, um, yeah, so I gotta go back, pull out that system there. So I gotta move these hose, these wires out of the way. But there's a couple little torque things. I'm gonna move that. Kinda sucks that it's right on top of it, but I'll have to move it out of there. So, all right. Yeah, it's a tight spot. I'm just using this flex head if you can see it. I don't know, the other one's going to be harder, but, uh, all right. All right, there's the cap. Looks like there's a little, I don't know what that is, corrosion or what it is. I actually have ELC. I did the ELC a couple years ago. Um, but, yeah, having some rubber straps makes it easier to keep the cack tube out of the way and the uh, wiring harness there. Let's take a look. Originally, I thought I could just leave this thing on there, but now it looks like I can't because if I had this one on there, I mean, this would seal up right against the oil cooler right there. And that actually would prevent water from getting to the EGR cooler. 
So, yeah, you kind of need this open space for water to allow to go across into the EGR cooler. So, I mean, this would this would prevent any sort of water from getting into the EGR cooler. So, yeah, I don't know if you'd use this as an EGR block off or what, but. All right, there it is installed. All right, the hose up. All right, I'm gonna turn the hose on for the first time. Just a little bit, not very much. I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, there it goes. Some. I don't expect to see very much come out of that oil cooler, but uh, I did actually do a flush before in this thing, and a lot of like rust flakes came out of it. Not really like rust. They're just I don't know. They were like big flakes. And some other guys in some other form. It looked like paint chips, but uh, that was a couple years ago. So. Alright, I'm going to let this run for a little bit, and then I'll blow some air on it next, and, uh, and I'll do the CLR treatment. Alright, this is 150 PSI. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that, so, I mean, obviously, if I, I burst the uh, oil cooler, and uh, so if I make a video, a future video of uh, water in my oil, then you know what's up. <laughs> so look at that. That's like a jet. Alright, so I'm going to turn this down to about uh, 10 PSI and see what happens. Alright. How much? I'm at about 18 PSI right now. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go more than that or not. Like I said, I don't want to burst that oil cooler. So now I have the water turned off, but I want to blow air through it because I want to empty the oil cooler. I want the thing empty and then I'm going to pull, pour CLR into the oil cooler. So, soon this all the water should be out because right now I'm pumping about 20 PSI air in the air and right directly into the oil cooler. So, the goal here is to empty that thing out so I don't have any water in there. So, I want the CLR to go right in there without, you know, the water uh, putting a sort of like a hamper on it. Okay, so now I'm going to do three treatments with the CLR. I can't, won't be able to do some video, but I'm just going to put a little funnel up there like that and put it in there like that. And the goal is just to fill up the oil cooler, let it sit for about a half an hour, and then do that three times. Alright, this is my second flush with the CLR. I noticed last time a lot of foam came out. I thought I'd film this. So I hit it with the air a couple times. Yeah, see that? I don't know if it's just—I don't know if it's foam because of the air that I'm putting in there, or just, or if it's actually dissolving. Hopefully not metal or rubber seals. <laughs> well, if this fails, and uh, don't do it this way. All right, so I'm all done back flushing. So now I'm gonna flush down a gallon of distilled water here. Hopefully that will clean out any of the uh, tap water that's in there, at least most of it. So this is not—I'm not doing a flush. I'm just doing like this back flush on the oil cooler. So I'm not even touching the heater cord and that kind of stuff. So, all right. All right, so that is the bore for the opening out of around the flush and the CLR, CLR through. It does seem cleaner. So that's a good sign. All right, put this thing back together. It filled up. All right, so it's back in there. I don't know if I mentioned those were at a T30 Torx, but I had to clean up the uh, limb there. Wish I kept that, that blue thing in there. It looked pretty cool, the anodized aluminum, but it wasn't designed to allow the coolant to flow. All right, so I'm gonna put this back together, get the straps on. All right, so I'm gonna load it back up with some Rotella ELC 5050. And uh, I'm gonna keep on checking the oil for about a week to see if the, uh, I busted the uh, oil cooler to see if uh, I'm gonna be looking for like milky oil there, so. Um, Alright guys, cool. Hopefully this is a success. I mean, I wasn't that bad. I was only 16 degrees, so just kind of preventative maintenance and I have a, uh, a tuner. I'll show you in the next video of Bully Dog. So, alright, cool.